So last episode, we took weekday sauce and we built upon it by making it spicy, essentially turning it into an arrabbiata sauce. Today we're gonna do a similar thing with my meatball recipe by making spicy meatballs and cooking them in the spicy arrabbiata or spicy weekday sauce we made last video. Again, it's simply gonna be adding Calabrian chilies to our meatball recipe. But it's important to know, I'm not a big recipe guy. I never made this with a recipe. It's always been through feel. So I'm gonna give you a recipe, but on some level you're gonna have to just get a feel for when they're seasoned right, when they're the right consistency and texture. So you gotta do it a few times. Like I've messed this up before. I've added too much garlic. I've added too much filler, too much moisture. The meatballs hadn't been firm enough. They fell apart in the sauce. So like you just kind of, you make these mistakes and you figure it out along the way. But today we're making a meatball recipe that has always served me well. The meatballs are always moist, they're always flavorful, and today they're gonna be nice and spicy. So let's just get right into it. First we're gonna do is we gotta make our sauce. We already made our sauce, right? So I'm going to get this on the stove and I'm just gonna run through it really quick so it's ready for our meatballs to kind of chill in. Now you guys ask me how do I find a can of tomatoes I like. And when I was shopping, they didn't have any of the cans I usually buy. So I thought it was a good opportunity to talk about it. Since I didn't find anything I was used to using, I simply go through the brands, look for an Italian one, of course. This is a DOP, this one's from Italy. It's, the label is in Italian, it's usually a good sign. Then I will go and read the label for the ingredients. Simply whole peeled tomatoes in juice. Perfect, that's all I want. And then that, I'll go home, I'll taste it. These look nice and delicious, they smell good. It's a good can of tomatoes. Now I know this is a good brand, Regia Regia, if I ever see it, I know it's a good one. I went ahead and pureed them through my food mill, you've seen me do it a hundred times, so for the sake of time, I got that out of the way. Now since I'm making a spicy sauce and spicy meatballs, I'm going to do a quarter cup of chopped up Calabrian chilies for the sauce and then a quarter cup of the chopped up Calabrian chilies for the meatballs. It's about a half cup total. I'm just gonna pop them in. Just make sure you take the stems off. I just lightly packed up a one cup measuring cup and I uh, figured once it's blended, it'll be about a half cup. So let's see. A little olive oil to help it go. Basically, just going to split this in half. Make sure you scrape all that goodness down. One for my sauce, one for my meatballs. Now before you cook your sauce, you want to reserve about a quarter cup of the puree for your meatball mix. So here's my arrabbiata sauce, my spicy weekday sauce. I got my sauce, my chilies, my garlic, my basil, olive oil. Let's get that on the stove right now. I'm not making it in a wide bottom pan just because I'm not worried about timing necessarily for this. This takes a little bit longer to cook and I don't want as much reduction so quickly. So I'm gonna use a regular pot. You can use a wide bottom pot if you want, just regulate the heat accordingly, but I'm using a bigger pot so the meatballs have a little bit more space to kind of swim in. sauces on the stove, I have it covered. This, these are gonna cook for a little bit, so I don't really want to reduce to start happening now. I just want the flavors to come together and get that sauce hot. So I put a cover on it, simmering on low. Now we just have to make our meatballs. So I'm gonna try and be precise here. I think I get about a cup, a half cup of chopped parsley. I like a lot, and I like it roughly chopped. So this is a full cup measure and that's about a little over a half cup. So it's about a half cup. We're gonna use that amount. So I've got a big bowl, which I'm gonna put 
this meat into. And this is gonna be the bowl we kind of mix everything in. This is what we're gonna make our little slurry in. The, the slurry basically acts as a moisture and flavor bomb. It's gonna hold flavor and moisture and we're gonna work that flavor and moisture into the ground beef so that everything's seasoned throughout. It's delicious. You should be able to smell the garlic, smell the parsley, smell the chilies, breadcrumbs and the cheese once the meatballs are made. And they should hold their shape without sort of drooping too much. You wanna basically get as much of that slurry into the meat as possible while still being able to maintain their shape as balls. So you start to add too much of the slurry and the balls sort of kind of become soft. So you really want some good texture, but you want moisture and flavor, and that's the big trick with meatballs. So my thing has been make this slurry, maybe you make a little bit too much, a little bit extra, but the idea is it's there if you need it, and you can kind of dial in the, the right consistency when you're mixing. So in here, we're gonna go with our reserve tomato sauce and the cream, about a quarter cup of each. Then we're gonna go in with two eggs. Break that up a little bit. In with the chilies. Grated garlic. Gonna do three or four cloves of garlic. The garlic is an essential flavor component, but it can come across as a little garlicky. So that's why we grate it. That kind of breaks down that flavor and makes it softer. We try to make sure we add the right amount. A little salt, pepper half cup of breadcrumbs, three quarters of a cup of Pecorino Romano cheese. It's important it's Pecorino, not Parmesan. The saltiness from Pecorino is gonna help season that meat throughout. So we want that extra salt from Pecorino. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese, not a cow's milk cheese. It's a little bit different than Parmesan, but I like to have both. And what I would do is I would put the Pecorino in this, but if I was gonna serve cheese on top, I would use Parmesan at the end. So Pecorino in and then parsley. Now this is gonna sort of tighten up and the breadcrumbs and everything are just gonna sort of absorb and be like a little kind of carrier of flavor. So now this is the slurry. It might be a little bit too much, but again, that's okay. And so basically you can just use this technique and add different flavors to kind of complement your meatballs and make Mexican meatballs, Asian meatballs, whatever. But this is a good technique for creating flavorful, moist, tender meatballs. So now we're gonna take this, switch spots. First thing I wanna do is push this meat out and then season this beef with a good layer of salt. And then start to add the slurry. You can probably add uh, about a, a half or three quarters of this slurry right off the bat into this meat and then slowly adjust from there. So add a little bit more if you need, but remember, try not to add too much. You still just want the balls to form the shape of a ball and hold that shape while still getting a good deal of this slurry into the meat. So I have a couple tablespoons left of the slurry. I'm fine, I like where this is at. I can sort of smell all the elements of the meatball, the spiciness, the cheese, the garlic, the parsley. I can see the, the color kind of dispersed throughout the meat so it looks like it's nice and flavored well. I'm happy. Now it's time to roll out the meatballs and I find a double scoop of one of these small cookie scoops, two of them, I think makes a good sized meatball. Now you basically, you want them to be nice and tight, but you don't want them to be dense. So you kind of gently pass it back and forth in your hand, squeezing gently, not hard, but gently, until you've kind of formed a nice mash with no sort of air in it, no kind of gaps. And then you roll it up into a ball, nice and tight. Get the measurements out a few at a time to speed up the process and just kind of bang them out.
Our meatballs are rolled and ready and looking beautiful. Now they're time to fry. We're just gonna fry them in some olive oil. I like a good amount of olive oil so I can get some browning all around. Nice hard sear. We don't need to cook them through. We just wanna create a nice crust and then we're gonna kind of braise them into the sauce. Do yourself a favor and go out and try and find some good crusty Italian bread like this. Because while this thing is cooking, you're going to be wanting to snack on that sauce. Plus, this bread is going to act a little bit like a plate for us. We're just going to kind of lay the bread on there, serve meatballs on top with sauce. So it's a beautiful way to serve meatballs, just some sauce, Parmesan cheese, some good bread. Of course you could make pasta with it, but you know how to make pasta now. You would just cook some pasta, whatever you like, throw that sauce on there and uh, serve it that way. It's gonna be my plate. These are gonna be my snack. I want the meatballs to cook for about an hour at least. Ideally an hour and a half. You could go two hours. After that I would kind of advise on not cooking beyond two hours they might start to fall apart a little bit. An hour, hour and a half is gonna get those beautifully tender. It's almost like braising them in the sauce. We're just gonna sit around, wait for these meatballs to cook, dip some bread in some sauce, and we're gonna check back in when the meatballs are done. I also got a nice package. This is from The Usual. It's the California Sonoma County Wine Company. Sustainably farmed, comes with a red and a rosé and these really awesome bottles. Um, this was really nice of them. I'm excited to try it. And I think this red is gonna go really nice with some meatballs. So thank you to the guys at Usual Wines. Check them out. So the meatballs are just about ready. It's been about an hour and a half. Things are looking and tasting good. Sauce is a good thickness and consistency. The meatballs are flavorful, they're spicy and they're tender. I just got my, my bread here, my little bread plate, and uh, I'm just gonna throw this under the broiler, flipping it to get a nice little crust on each side. I don't really wanna toast it fully. I want that center to be nice and soft, uh, but I just wanna give it a little structure because we're gonna be pouring sauce on them. and then you're ready to go. We're just gonna serve these up. surprisingly delicious and I don't like red wine. It's really smooth and drinkable and it actually goes really well with this. I know it just seems like an ad, but they literally just came in the mail and I needed some red wine to drink. This is dinner for me, so. So thank you to Usual Wines. I'm really into it. As for my meatballs, they're juicy, they're tender. 
They're spicy. It just sort of exhibits what a nice little meal you can have for yourself. You get yourself a good bottle of wine, pour yourself a glass or two, nothing crazy. You have a nice piece of good bread. It's like really rustic stuff. Some meatballs in a sauce. Throw some spinach on the bread and then pour the meatballs and sauce on top and you've got like a balanced meal. It's a really simple but delicious way to not only feed yourself but to cook for others. You can't really beat this. This is some grade A top of the line food. It just proves how simple good cooking can be. But this meal doesn't cost a lot of money. It just feels really luxurious. It feels like at the end of a nice cold fall day or on a weekend, serving this up on some bread or with some pasta is truly heaven. This is the last regular recipe of the year. From here on out, we're gonna do a couple Halloween episodes and then we're going straight into Thanksgiving prep and then Christmas prep. So, get ready guys. Closing out the year with a bang. And I'm coming out with a holiday plan of attack that is gonna be live on my website. I'm still gonna do the videos and whatnot, but my recipes are gonna live there. There's gonna be exclusive content. There's also gonna be a, a live chat that, is, that are exclusive to the people who pay for it. And uh, it's gonna act like a little holiday hotline. So I'll be able to be there with a couple people helping people out as they need in critical periods leading up to Thanksgiving prep. All Patreon members will get this service for free. Otherwise, it's going to be $5 every year to access this holiday plan. This is a way to help me pay people who help me throughout the year. It's me testing ways to put little kind of packages together. Maybe I don't need to make a whole cookbook, but if I can actually give you something you'll consume and people might pay for, then I'm gonna explore it. Hopefully I've got some holiday merch that is really special coming. So I got things working. It's gonna be a busy time of year. That's all that I have. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Thank you.